I believe this is a project that is going to show people a new way to tell these stories. So I'm Ryan Swanson. I'm a head writer of The Chosen and an executive producer on the project. I work with Dallas Jenkins and Tyler Thompson, two guys who know the Bible really well. For Dallas, when he did The Shepherd, he knew he had touched something that had been heretofore untapped. He found a vein where he could bring to life by making the shepherd a person like us who suffers, who looks forward to things, who gets overeager, and to watch that moment through his eyes was, I think it was a revelation for, for everybody who saw it. People must know. People must know. People must know. So our process started in November of 2017 with me traveling to Elgin, Illinois to stay with Dallas and meet up with Tyler. The first thing we talked about was what a season one would look like. Everybody knows how the story ends. And most of the time with the miracles and the moments that punctuate our season one, people know those moments too. We want to present them in a way that maybe you've never experienced them before. And as we drive towards a moment that people recognize, maybe one they've been familiar with all their lives, we want to enter those moments with everybody accounted for. You know the circumstances of everybody's lives when these events happen. So as we drive towards the end that we know is coming, you will get a sense of what's at stake for each character in their personal lives. We 60% the penalties. What's that leave you with? Simon, I came with about 60% of what I owe. I can't even pay. We're ruined. Well, now it's we. We had to take those moments, know they existed, and walk our characters through the experience. We can imagine ourselves there, and then we can get some sense, even through our own experience watching the screen, of what it could possibly have been like to encounter those cathartic moments when Jesus enters their lives. Lift up your head, fisherman. So the way our writing process works is that we started with the skin of the, the season. We knew where we were going to go and how we broke it up incrementally into eight episodes. I would write a short blurb about what that episode was about, then I would write an outline from that blurb that made an episode dramatic within itself, that allowed for multi-episode arcs, and that made the most room for the Jesus arc, which is gonna be ongoing. Tyler then would take the outline and turn it into what we call a scriptment, which is a treatment script. When he was inspired to write dialogue, he would. Otherwise, it's a lot of prose with a ton of color, with period appropriate names, dress, uh, vegetation even. Tyler is a real poet, and we knew he would allow uh, the color to bloom. And then I take the scriptment and turn it into a draft of the script. And Dallas takes that and he alters it to become the script he wants to shoot. I think my favorite thing that I received from Tyler in that process was when he presented the opportunity for Simon to look up at God in the boat. That moment was very sparse when we first got it. Guy on a boat, Matthew watching from above. I knew that Tyler had something for that moment because where Simon was going to end up shortly needed to be set up with all the angst, all the, uh, the historical frustration of Simon and his people waiting for the Messiah, the seesaw, the tug of war that he must have felt inside. And Tyler delivered something that uh, felt to all of us like a revelation. Bring us out of Egypt, part the Red Sea, only to let us wander in the desert for 40 years. Give us the land, only to let us be exiled in Babylon. Bring us back, only to be crushed by Rome. That was from Tyler's own brain, but we had set the stage for this moment to happen. And it was sort of a, a win for our team that we all recognized that that moment had to be populated with something impactful. It was an incredible moment for our team, and I think it's my favorite moment from the, the first half of season one anyway. Action. Dallas's vision is extremely strong. It crystallizes very quickly, and that works perfectly for me. My approach to writing is about options. 
So we want to iterate a thing until we have a spectrum of options covered. I won't pitch anything that I don't have a reason to present. Dallas is extremely logical. He's extremely strong in his convictions. And unless I have the process that I have, we don't work the way we work together. There have been times when we've encountered uh, conflict. The typical way to handle it in a writer's room is if you're 50-50 on a thing, if neither has an opinion, the better reasoned argument wins. If you've both reasoned your argument out well, if somebody has more passion than the other, that's the version you usually go with. With Dallas, it's pretty much, I ask once. If I don't get any traction and I really believe in it, I might ask twice. If Dallas is set, he's set. And what I do is I serve his vision for this project. What I would like to do is let's just, let's walk through it. Let's talk, we can walk and talk through it. I feel like my faith has grown through the process. We are laboring to just let what's inside of us come out on the page. And that is challenging. That's maybe the most exhausting thing about writing is when you're really drawing on something that lives inside of you, finding a way to give it a voice. We're changing nothing about the moments that make this story possible. But I hope by giving you a peek at the journey that they might have taken uh, on their way to those moments, that it allows everybody to engage in a level that maybe they never have before with these stories, um, except in their personal lives. And we just are a small tool in the ministry, but it's the most exciting project I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm.